Someone was throwing out this 75 inch 4K TV because it stopped working. And in this video, I'm gonna show you three things. I wanna show you how I diagnose this TV, how I'm gonna fix it for free, and I wanna show you how almost anyone who has a broken TV and only has one tool, a screwdriver, can fix one of these guys. All right, so the first step is to find out if the screen is broken. Now, I had the opportunity to talk to the people who were getting rid of this TV, and they told me it just quit one day, but you always wanna make sure that the LCD screen isn't cracked because if it's cracked, no matter what you read on the internet, there's nothing you can do to fix it. So what you can do is you can get a flashlight and look at the screen at an angle and look for any cracks or anything out of place. And in this screen, everything looks good. All right, next thing to try is to plug in the TV and turn it on and see what happens. Nothing is showing up on the screen and you can see the little light down there in the corner turns on and then it fades out. So the next thing I do is I take the model number and I put it into Google to see if I can find any common problems and repairs. I also type in the model number on eBay and I look for repair kits or repair services and those things just give me clues as to maybe common problems on this model. So I actually have some experience with symptoms like this and it points to a problem on the main board and that's the same thing that I found with my online research. So so even before pulling out a screwdriver, I have a pretty good idea what's wrong with this TV. Getting the back cover off of most TVs is pretty easy, though sometimes there are a lot of screws. All right, let me give you a quick tour of all that's happening here. This is one of the busiest backsides of a TV that I've ever seen. This thing has three power supply boards. Power goes in here and gets split between these two boards. This board sends the power over to these guys right here. These are LED driver boards, which manage the LED backlight. This power supply here sends the power over to the main board. That's what this is. This is where the brains happen, and this is where I suspect the problem is. And then you have these black cables go over to here, and underneath this metal plate is the time and control board. And you see these white strips. They go up to the top and the bottom and connect into the LCD screen itself. So when you don't know anything about what may be wrong with your TV, you can always check for the three main voltages, typically 5, 12, and 24 volts, although they can be very different. And you can usually find where these are based on the printing on the circuit boards. So with the TV plugged in and the power button pressed, I see the 5 volt standby voltage. I also have what's typically referred to as the 12 volt rail. On this model, it's the 19 volts. But over here on the backlight voltage, it should be 24 volts, but I'm getting zero. So since there's no 24 volts here, the backlight is not coming on. It's not getting the power that it needs. And the reason why that's happening is because of these wires over here. You can see there's a green and a white wire. These two wires tell this power supply board and the one over here to turn on. So when you push the power button on the remote or on the TV, it sends a signal to these boards, usually about three volts. So the white wire you can see is 3.6 volts, which is about normal. And on this green wire, I'm getting zero. So there's no signal coming across this green wire to tell this power supply to turn on and produce all of its power. Now we're back over at the main board. The green and white wires are coming out right here. I wanna show you something else. This big black piece of metal here on this board is a giant heat sink. And there are two main processors on this board. There's one right here and there's one right here. Now you can't see it, but I can put my hand on here while the TV's on and I can feel that it's much more warmer down here than it is up here. And when I bring out my thermal imaging camera, you can see it clearly. The bottom one is much hotter than the top one. So for some reason, this chip is not getting all the power it needs and it's not sending the signal to tell that power supply to turn on. So I mentioned that if you have a screwdriver and you know what board has the problem, pretty much anybody can fix a TV. I'll show you how to fix this one for free, but if you don't want to mess with board repair or you just want to go fast, simply buy a replacement board. For example, I got this new main board on eBay for $100. So with the help of the internet, really anyone can fix their TV. This board has four screws holding it in, and with the various connections, just go slow and make sure you put them all back where they go. All right, let's power it on and see what happens. Light is on. Hey, look at the logo. TV is working. All right, and everything seems to be working. So I have a 75 inch 4K TV that I only put $100 into. So you can always buy a main board, but this is frugal repair. So what if I don't wanna spend any money to fix this TV? Let's go back to the main board. Here's a close up view of the processor that's having the issue. I'm not actually going to dive deeper into diagnosing this main board because we're likely dealing with a common problem. These chips on here get really hot and TVs get cycled on and off a lot and this thermal cycling can have an effect and potentially warp the board here or even mess up the tiny little wires 
that are inside of the chip itself, but the end result is the same, is that it stops working. I covered that topic in another video with some cool macro shots. I'll link to that video at the end of this one. Since the issue is likely the lack of an electrical connection under the chip, I'm experimenting with a hairdryer to see if I can warp this section of the board enough to get it to work. But as I suspected, it wasn't going to work even after multiple attempts. So what really needs to happen is to get the bottom of the chip so hot that it melts the solder underneath. I would normally remove the heat sink and heat the chip from the top, but this heat sink is a major pain to get off, so I'm going to heat it up from underneath. So the first thing I did was squirt a bunch of flux under the chip to help aid the soldering process, and I made sure the board was level, and then I turned on my hot air station. Now you don't need an expensive hot air station like I have. If you watch that other video that I mentioned, I show you how you can do this same thing with a $20 tool. So I set the heat to 400 degrees Celsius and I moved it around the chip area for a few minutes, keeping a close eye for when the solder gets molten or turns shiny. And when I was confident the whole area got hot enough, I let it cool down. All right, I got the board in there. It's time for the moment of truth. This is plugged in. Let's give it some power. I got the remote control here. That light is on down there. What happens to it? It is fading, but let's push the power button. Light is on, so that's good. What do we see on the side? Yes, the logo is there. We got it to work. So with some heat, I have a 75 inch 4K TV that I fixed practically for free. Okay, now that the TV is running, you can see that there's an equal amount of heat between those two processors. And so that top one was the one that was the problem because it wasn't as hot as the other one and heating it up actually got it to work again. And remember the green wire where it was showing zero volts before, now it's measuring over three volts. And over here, our backlight voltage should measure 24 volts, there it is. All right, now the big question and maybe a little controversy, do you call this a fix or do you call it a Band-Aid? Personally, I don't know what to call it because the TV could run like this for many more years. But if you do do a trick like this, there is something you can do to increase your chances, and that is to add more active cooling to this heatsink. For example, I pulled this off of an old laptop. This heatsink with a fan on here, I could put it on this heatsink, or I could buy a USB powered fan and put it on here and plug it right into one of these USB ports. Now, if you were to do that, you obviously have to cut a hole in that plastic cover so it would go and fit and you know all the airflow could come out of there. Check the video description down below. I have a link to my free guide on how to fix TVs as well as the links to tools that I've used in this video. And as promised, here is the video that you wanna go check out if you wanna learn more about how heat can fix a TV.